Hi everybody, it's Franny. And this is Heidi. And this is our very first international coffee and cars. The first one ever, the I first think. first one ever. In, in the, the world. In the whole world, ever. <laughs> Okay, so we, we put out something uh, a little while ago and asked for submissions of your cars, and I thought it'd be kind of fun. So we'll, um, we'll throw some photos up over here-ish, and you can take a look at them as we go, and we're going to highlight one car at a time and kind of go through the whole thing. I think it's going to be super fun. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be pretty super sweet. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's just get started. The first one I want to start with is Andre from... Brazil, he has submitted a 1965 VW bus, and this is a split window bus. It's super sweet. It's got a 1200 cc engine in it, 34 horsepower, yeah. and it's six volts electrical system on it, so it's all totally original. So he received this bus as a gift from his uncle about 10 years ago, and it was totally rusted and kind of jacked up, I guess, right, and kind of a yeah. mess, a bit of a basket case. Yeah. And he, it had not been running for like 11 years before that. Holy cow. So he started the restoration and his important thing in the restoration was to keep it as original as possible. And he kept the original 36 right. horsepower engine. Check that out. Yeah. And the six volt electrical system. So mm -hmm. that's pretty sweet. And he is now the third owner and he's been around this car. So this is really cool. This is a lot like Heidi. Mm -hmm. So, um, Heidi uh, knows R356 from when she was just a little tyke, actually. Yeah, I think I was about eight when I first saw it. Yeah. yeah, and so Andre said that he was uh, three when, he has a picture of himself when he was little in the bus. Yeah, we How, have a photo of that. Yeah, it's really, really cool. So it's obviously a really big passion for him, and mm -hmm. it's a beautiful, beautiful bus. I love the brown and it's the white really accents pretty. and stuff. It's yeah. just gorgeous. So he did mm -hmm. a beautiful job. Andre, big thumbs up. That's awesome. Beautiful job. And thanks for your entry. Yeah. Yeah, and thanks entry. so much for your entry. <laughs> Our next submission is from Dave from North Carolina, and he has a 2000 Mazda Miata Special Edition. It has a really nice exterior of mahogany mica. And then the interior is cream leather and a wood steering wheel, gear shift knob, and parking brake handle. So imagine all three of those are wooden and a nice center console that's wooden as well. It has SC chrome wheels and it has just under 58,000 miles. It is a six speed manual. How cool is that? Yeah, you have to yeah, have manual. Gotta have that in the Miata, <laughs> totally. So it's kind of a cool story that he has. He said the car loves curves, most fun you can have on the serious twisties. Evidently, it handles very well on the mountain roads. Oh, yeah. He found this in, and hopefully I say this correctly, Campo Bello, South Carolina, at a small specialty lot with a really nice owner. And he's actually stayed in touch with the owner. They're friends now. That's so. really that's really neat and kind of unusual, right? It's amazing right? how many people that you'll meet in these car communities. But you have something like that too. So the 993 is like that, right? And um, oh yeah, yeah. So the guy we bought the 993 from the broker um, also, believe it or not, has a honey. Um, he right. has like a honey. I get honey from him every now and Yeah, then. so Heidi gets honey from him. So she stays in touch with him too. So that's kind of cool. That's neat. So he stays in touch with his, his uh, with um, with his friend. Right. Yeah, that's You're really right. cool. So David's had the car for about five years now, and he's been totally babying it and really enjoying it. I just thought, I like the story that he stayed in touch with the, the uh, owner. And it looks like it's like brand new too. So it mm -hmm. looks beautiful. It's it looks like he's taking awesome care of this car. Right. So it's really cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yay. So that one's from the U.S. The first one was from Brazil. Yeah. How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> so Franny, what's the next car that you have? Well, the next car I have is Dave from England. Ooh, so traveling back to England. Yeah. So he <laughs> has a Marlin Roadster. I've not heard one of these, but it's an M3. So it's it's a British kit car, but it's built off of the uh, the inner pinnings and the mechanical works of a BMW Z3 cool. M. So the M car. Wow. Um, things got some serious power to it. It's got 360 to 370 uh, horsepower. So 0 to 60 in under four seconds. This thing is quick, super mm -hmm. quick. Really quick. Um, 
So it's really neat. It's got a, he's got a, um, a really neat adjustable suspension on the whole thing as well. He's the second owner and the first in owner actually commissioned the car and only covered 3,500 miles wow. in the past 12 years. Um, he checked with Marlin and they've only ever built two of these uh, Sportsters with the, M the M3 variant. So it's a pretty rare wow. thing. Super rare. Yeah, but it's really neat. And uh, according to their records, the other one is in the Czech Republic, so that's kind of cool. Um, purchased this car uh, this year, and he's hoping to take it to a few track events and stuff. It's going to be super, that'll be super fun, huh? So it sounds like it's going to be great fun. So Dave, um, all the best. I think that's going to be super fun. Sounds mm -hmm. awesome. And thanks for your submission, and thanks for your photos. Cool. Thank yeah. you. So all right, Heidi, what's next? Um, this is our second U.S. entry. It's Ivan from Norwalk, California. He has a 1979 Spitfire 1500. Sweet. And it's really pretty, like an emerald green yeah, color. I don't know what green. the actual, yeah, really pretty. you know, color green is. But um, he says it's special because it's his first old car yeah <laughs> which i think is funny your That's first great. classic car yeah first classic car the car was just a tub when you got it and you put it together wow that's great yeah it looks that's great awesome. too yeah so looking at the photos here that um it's a beautiful car i bet it's super fun as yeah. well with the top down take it up and down um uh that's i know where norwalk is in california anywhere near the pch that would be really fun to take this car on but so. definitely a convertible which yeah. would be fun for yeah. a nice drive and Obviously, you're working on the car, so that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yay! So, congrats on your new, um, your new old, new to you car. <laughs> right. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay, Franny, what do we got next? All right. So we have Doug from San Diego, California. His car is a '73 uh, 911 Porsche 911E Coupe, manufactured in, in '73, 1973. So it's one of 1,365E coupes. Light ivory brown cork interior equipped with factory installed leather Recaro sport seats. So that's pretty cool, actually. Um, one kind of neat thing about Recaro, uh, if you look on the side of the 356s, the, uh, the older ones, they have this Ruder badge. And that badge on there is from the, the, the uh, coach builder, Ruder, who built the coach, built, coach for the, their coach builder for the 356s back in the day. Say that fast three times. Yeah, I know. It's, it's really hard. At <laughs> any rate, so uh, back in the day, uh, Porsche didn't actually build their own cars. They had another company. It was literally across the street. They would build the cars. They would roll them over. Great. It's sometime in the B range, about 62, I think, they rolled, they bought Ruder and rolled them into Porsche, mm -hmm. except for one small thing, and that was a small company that they spun off called Recaro, and mm -hmm. that's where Recaro seats come from. They're the last vestige of the Ruder um, uh, coach builder. Yeah. Kind of a cool thing. Anyway, so um, the, this car has Recaro seats in it. Sorry for the, the, little, the little transgression there. I have to laugh over this because it's such a, a Porsche thing. That it is. He it has is. like all these stats. He does. So I have to give Doug a little bit of a hard time because yeah. it's like it's like such a Porsche thing to have like all these stats. It's a beautiful car things, though. It Holy is. cow. It's, it's totally gorgeous. Beautiful. Okay. So matching numbers, engine and transmission. Engine type is of course the flat six. It's mm -hmm. a 2.4 liter. Uh, let's see. Puts out about 165 horsepower or so. And let's see, 147 pound-feet of torque, which is pretty sweet. And five speed. I wonder if that's the um, 915 transmission back then. Probably was. Well, there was a 901 then the 915. Yeah, I don't know when they switched over. <laughs> any rate, uh, zero to 62 in 7.9 seconds, so no slouch. Mm -mm. Maximum speed, 136 or so. Um, so they didn't weigh all that much, 2,300, a little over 2,300 pounds. So this is a driver uh, condition car for him. No trailer queen, he says. And... He maintains it to the original specifications as practical. And I'm a big fan of that, actually. Mm -hmm. I think that um, it's great to have like super original bits on your car as long as they don't interfere with safety 
or major functionality in the car. Like, for instance, oh, it'd be great to have old ply bias tires on the car, but then they kind of run like crap. And so they're not that safe. He likes it because actually this is funny. So this is so Porsche as well. He, what he, one thing he really, really likes about it is its lack of options. So it has no sunroof, it has no air conditioning, no power windows and all that sort of stuff. So right. it's a very raw, very mechanical car. And that's what makes these uh, 911s really so special, yeah, I think. Yeah, and he's saying really it's neat. very comfortable for all yep. day driving. So they really are. He's probably taken on a road trip um he lives in northern san diego so yep. it's great yeah and he's the third owner since 1987 uh, wow and he has all the maintenance history since new how sweet is that that's very nice yeah. and the car is unrestored has approximately 146,000 miles on it that's wow. pretty cool that's very neat. cool yeah. thank you so yeah, yeah. thanks much so much for, your, for... for that that's awesome yeah thanks doug that was really fun oh what's next Oh, so I have a Mini Cooper owner here, Nathan. So Nathan, um, let me just start out by saying Nathan evidently was involved in a car accident. So sorry to hear that. Car accidents are always bad. Yeah, they're always a bummer. So evidently um, he had a 2007 Mini Cooper that was just the base model. It wasn't the S model. Was it yours in and 2007? The other one? The yeah. Other one? Yeah, it was. yeah, that one was not an accident. Yeah. So um, anyway, <laughs> so he was in love with it. He said it was awesome. He had only had it for two years and it was totaled by someone running a red light at 70 miles per hour. So evidently they didn't, didn't even they see didn't the light see the, and 70 or miles they were on their we, cell phone. We don't have or, any roads with lights that have speed limits of 70 miles an hour around that's here. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So really, really too bad about that. That'll so anyway, it, the car got totaled mm -hmm. and thankfully Thinking. you were okay. So luckily we're, you know, reading this and that you have another car and that right, you're right. flying. I mean that I heard that and I was like, okay, Ooh. so Anyway, so yeah, it's um, the car is a 2013 Mini Cooper S. So you went from a Mini Cooper to a Cooper S. So it's got a little bit more pep to it. Yep. Um, and you really like the looks, the quirkiness, and the way it drives. Yep. So and turbocharged, and right. it's great. Looks like it has a white top on it as well and uh, got the white bonnet stripes on it. Looks mm -hmm. great. Oh, looks awesome. Yep. I bet that's so, super duper fun. Thank you for sub your submission, and um, I don't know if I said that he was from Cincinnati, Ohio. I think I did. So you are a third U.S. entry, and uh, thank you for sending your photos of your mini, and I'm so glad that you are able to do that. Yay! Thanks, Nathan. All right, so... Um, what do we got next? Let's see. Let's... Moving on to Thomas from Dallas. So, uh, Thomas has a 1991, which would be a 964 Porsche Cabriolet 911. Uh, really neat. It's beautiful. It's red, uh, black top on it, and got the really cool wheels. Okay, yeah, so this is so this is car. his first Porsche that he's had. Right. So uh, careful with that, though. They can be a tad addictive. So um, <laughs> that's great. That's awesome. And it's still analog enough uh, to do the majority of maintenance on it, which is really really cool. And uh, let's see. So it allows for extra wind in my dog's hair, serving as a playpen for his firstborn son, <laughs> and allows me to take the vast beauty of Texas back roads have to offer. So that's one of the cool things about right. these cars. They're He's so got usable. He's a picture of his dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they're they're usable. You can take them everywhere. You can rely mm -hmm. on them. Um, that's that's awesome. So always smiles in the car when he has the top down and mm -hmm. whether it's um, taking the long way home or driving a couple of blocks just to get donuts or something, you know, <laughs> and then they're really fun either way. Right. So um, and he's right. He so he says that classic cars have smells and sounds and feelings that can create a new uh, new memories as well and propel people back in time. It's totally true. Yeah, every every time I get into Ava, it just brings, I mean, I remember the smells even from when I was eight years old, climbing in that car and it still smells the same. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that weird smell. I mean, they always use these kind of strange materials that they don't mm -hmm. use anymore. Like and, Volkswagen Beetles and the horse hair. Yeah, and all that. And yeah. it smells so much. You get in one, you're like, oh, I remember that smell. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Thank you so much, Thomas, for your yeah. submission. The car is beautiful. It's super awesome. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Okay, so we're going back to Europe here. Niez from Switzerland and Scotland. Right. So we have a 
Audi TT with a V6 engine, 3.2 liter, and it's a 2003 model. Wow. So why is the Audi special to Niaz? As a youngster, I saw Thomas Freeman's design in an auto car magazine in 1989. The initial design remained mostly unchanged. About a decade later, the TT was put into production. I was still quite young, so I didn't buy one then. Cool. Eventually, I found myself still in love with its iconic design. I know how that is. You know, you just yeah. really obsess over something and you really want it. It was felt that it is influenced by the tub design of the Porsche 356 of the past. Yes, I have heard that about the Audi TT. I can kind of see a... the similarity. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a very classic design. Yep. It, it remains part of my collection and has 264,000 kilometers. And it's as strong as its first day. Yay. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. some serious uh, mileage on that car. <laughs> Kilometer miles, yes. Um, my TT was in the car magazine, and someone even uploaded the fo photo to Pin Interest. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, wow. And, you know, I literally like those cars. We have a, um, we just, some, yeah. Yeah, some friends who, have, who had an Audi TT, and I always love Oh, it's, it's, I just think that's the coolest car. We, we were, I remember driving around and it was probably early, early 2000s. Franny and I would be looking at the Audis and we were always like, those are kind of cool. Those, those are pretty are cute. cute. Yeah, yeah. We always both kind of like those cars. Yeah. They're neat. Yeah. They're neat. Sporty and kind of fun. And from what I understand, it's the platform that, and mm -hmm. it could be totally wrong, but the platform that the Beetle was put on as well and sort of a detuned version of that suspension and engine wise. Oh, that's right. Yeah. With the new Beetle. Not yeah. The, not for the, the Cabriolets, right. I think, for more right. than anything else. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank think you so. for your submission, Niaz. We really appreciate it. So we still have a few more cars. So what do we have next, Franny? Well, we have uh, Jose from Spain living in Switzerland. So the car is an Aston Martin V8 Vantage. Wow, that's a cool car. And mm -hmm. they sound like nothing else. That's awesome. So he says he's uh, absolutely in love with the car and it's been uh, an un unobtainable dream for him. Being able to just drive one was far and above what he ever thought he would be able to do. Uh, not mention actually actually owning one. So he spends most of his weekends attending classic car events around Central Europe and driving through the Swiss mountain passes. Yeah. Well, Jose, have fun in the Swiss right. mountains. Yes. Uh, I know there's a couple, three more other big YouTubers that are out in that area and drive through those mountains a lot. And what a fun car. So congrats on your car and thanks right. so much for your submission. That's awesome. Thank you. Right. So we have one more entry, and this is from Ron Nelson from Simi Valley, California. Uh, he has a 1968 Volkswagen Bug mm. deluxe sedan, 1500cc engine with H case. So it's quite a story that Ron has. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it. So Ron is a volunteer at an auto shop at a private school. And so what he does is he basically sits down with these uh, middle school kids and even high schoolers and shows them how to work on the car during the semester. That's so awesome. That's that great. sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and evidently, another yeah. gentleman named Tom used to volunteer with him as well and help them out. And Tom would always show up in this old beetle that Ron now has. And so Tom actually passed away and his family gave, uh, gave him the car knowing that he worked on cars and stuff like that. He said it was in poor shape, that it had three different colors of brown. It was faded metallic root beer paint, brown oh primer, brown yeah. rust. <laughs> <laughs> the driver's side was ready to fall off due to rust. Um, I do have one photo of the uh, car in the before condition. Um, the engine and transmission ran, but were also tired, he said. So Tom's family saw a worn out relic that was ready to be junked. And I guess Ron had talked to them and said, I would actually like to buy the car. 
And so they knew that he had been helping the kids and stuff. So they went ahead and gave it to him, which is awesome. Yeah, that's so, great. So um, they just donated it to yeah, him. Yeah, it was great. What a great and opportunity so to share with the kids, he too. He actually restored the car in Tom's honor, which is really neat. And it boasts the original 1500cc engine with awesome. DH case. That's so great. That's still there. And after completing all the body work, he had it painted its original color, which is that zenith blue color that you see oh, in these photos. So it's beautiful. Isn't that, yeah, awesome? that light blue, isn't that gorgeous? And and that rack on the top, that's so cool. I love those racks. And Ron is actually driving this car now as his daily driver along with a 1978 Volkswagen bus. Woohoo, another Volkswagen bus owner. Yeah. So how cool um, is that? Anyway, that's great. Thank you so much for your entry, Ron. Yep. And um, really appreciate these stories. So basically, if you have a great story about your car, we're looking for more entries. This yeah, is, please uh, do. This, this is, is going to be something that we do every month. It's our international uh, cars and coffee yep, that yep. we're doing on Heidi and Franny's Garage. And we want to know about your projects and about your cars and why they are special to you. So Right. Yeah. So that's the thing is that, you know, these these cars are, they're really special. The Our cars are very special to us. Right. And, and they all have a story. So we just want to hear your stories. Mm -hmm. And um, we'd love to... You know, put them up on the screen here and uh, share them with the world. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I think that, um, you know, everybody enjoys coffee and cars. Yeah. And so get out your coffee and, you know, take a look at these cars and hear the interesting stories behind them. And uh, any comments or whatever it would be awesome. Just go ahead and put them down below. We'd all like to see them. I think that's going to be great. I think the owners that are, you know, submitting their submissions might like to see comments about their cars. So totally feel yep. free to talk to the owners. Yeah, that'd I'm be sure good. they'll answer you back. Yeah, they will. And so this would be great. <laughs> right. Yeah, this would be kind of an interactive. That's a very good point. This is good. See, right. we're new at this. So this right. is great. This, right. I think this is going to be super fun. Of course, as always, a special thanks to our Patreon supporters as well. Right, right. And in the meantime, um, like I said, go ahead and submit an entry if you have an entry. This, the entries can be submitted to I think it's info at Heidi and Franny's garage dot com. There you and go. So yep. that's into the community tab. If um, if you don't have a chance to write it down right now, but I'll go ahead and put it up on the screen so you can see it as well. But go ahead and submit one to three photos for the entry. Right. Yep. So, well, thanks again so much for watching. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.